Good morning, Miss Ng. Happy math. Good morning, Miss Rebecca. Happy math to you. You know, today is our 22nd episode of math. And it's the end of our season of math. Mm -hmm. Because we take a three-week break. But next week, something very exciting is going to happen. We will still have a show. And it will actually be the premiere of Alice, the Compendium. <laughs> so we have put together all of the Alice versions for the past 21 episodes. You never knew you needed it, but you, you sure knew, want it. it. It comes to an hour and 10 minutes. <laughs> what else could you do with your time? Absolutely. And so we are very excited to bring you Alice, the horse, the camel, the legend. 2020. Yes. And other things, other things in the next few weeks. But since this is the last bit of math for today, it's a little bit different. It's a little bit different. Some of you might be wondering, math, what is it good for? In fact, there was an old song. Math! Bo, 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 bo. What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. nothing. Say it again. That's not true. That is not true at all. That's a song called War. But, my friends, Math is very important. So we're going to read a story today about a woman named Katherine Johnson. Hey. Who loved math, loved the count. And what she did with her love for math is pretty big. Bigger than you. Maybe you know her story. Bigger, but, but. So counting is very important. Math is very important. And it's also fun. It is. And so I thought we could start off by counting one hand, by counting two hands, by counting three hands. No, you don't have three hands, but... You have 10 fingers. Wiggle them all up like this, close them up, put them behind your back, and take one from the left. Boop, boop. Take one from the right. Boop, boop. We meet in the middle and we dance all night. La 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 waka waka la 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 la. We made up a dance called the whoop de do. What de do, what de do, what de do, do, do. Then we waved goodbye, bye bye, and we walked away. Bye-bye, and there were two. Bah, 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 bah. Two from the left. Boo Take a two from the right. Boo doop. We meet in the middle. We dance all night. La 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 waka waka la 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 la. We made up a dance called the snips galore. Snippy snip, snippy snip, snippy snip, snip, snip. Then we waved goodbye. Bye-bye, and we walked away. Bye bye, and there are four. Bum, ba, 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 ba. Three from the left. Boo doop. Take a three from the right. Boo doop. We meet in the middle. We dance all night. La 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 la. Waka waka la 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 la. We made up a dance called the pick up sticks. Pick them up, pick them up, pick them up, up, up. Then we wave goodbye. Bye bye, and we walked away. Bye bye, and there are six. Bum, ba, 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 ba. Four from the left. Boo doop. Take a four from your right. Boo doop. We meet in the middle. We're gonna dance all night. La 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 la. Waka waka la 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 la. We made up a dance called the bend and straight. Bend straight. Bend straight. Bend straight. Then we wave goodbye. Bye bye, and we walked away. Bye bye, and there are eight. Ba, 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 ba. Five from your left. Boo Take five from your right. Boo We meet in the middle. We dance all night. La 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 la. Waka waka la 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 la. We made up a dance called the clap. Clap. Clap and clap again. Woo! My friends, my friends, let's do a little writing of our numbers. What is the number we don't have anything? That'd be zero, Bob. How many fingers am I holding up right now? One.
Holly, you think this? seen a cool show called Sesame Street and when I was a kid Sesame Street was on it was actually on even before I was born just two years but you know still I like to think of Sesame Street's older than I am and it's about a ladybug picnic and I don't know if you know it but it's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and they all played games at the ladybug picnic isn't that fun that is fun. And that is a really good way to learn all the numbers up to 12. Okay? Let, let, let's, let's draw some ladybugs. Nora's a big fan of the ladybug. Remember Nora? All right. So, and I want to say hi to Chi. So, I don't know if you're out there. I know you've been very busy getting ready for kindergarten. And Miss Tallulah. And I know you have a new little sister there, Miss Chisa, but I just want to say hi. I don't know if you're still out there watching. Let's draw a ladybug. What's a ladybug's main color, at least in fictionalized accounts that we've thought of before? <laughs> red. So we got, we got to do the red bodies. And how many ladybugs were there at the ladybug picnic? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All right. So we have, how many do we have now? One, two, three. You got to keep going. So that, that'd be one, two, three. What's this one? Four. That marker is less than successful. It is. Four. Five. Ooh. Maybe it was operator error. Maybe it just needed to juice up a bit. Do you think ladybugs make that noise? I think they do when they're singing. Mm. Let's see. So now we have five. And this would be six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we still need, how many more do we need? 11, 12, 10. So you can remember the ladybug picnic that way and count the 12 that way. Try. Sing it again, sing it again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and they all played games at the ladybug picnic. Do you remember that song, Rebecca? No. Such a good one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and they all played games at the ladybug picnic. So there you go. Now, what if we took two of them away? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What if we took the second row away? One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Alice the horse, she had no humps. 
Alice the whore, she had no humps. Alice the whore, she had no humps. So she went to the store, but um, bum, bum. Alice the camel, she bought one hump. Boom! Alice was a camel, now she bought one hump. Boom! Alice was a camel today, she bought one hump. Bow! Go, Alice, go, but um, bum, bum. Alice the camel thought if one is good, two and three might be better. So Alice the camel, she bought a couple more. Alice now had three humps, but um, bum, bum. Alice the camel, I guess she's a camel, with three humps. Alice was a camel with three humps. Alice was a camel with three humps. And she said, no, I think I'll have two more. Alice was a horse, but she had five humps. Alice was a horse, but she had five humps. Alice was a horse, she had five humps though. Alice is a horse, I'm still a horse. With zero or one or two or three or more humps, that is who I am. Very nice. Alice the camel horse. My friends, as promised, Let's find out math. Ba, 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 ba. What is it good for? Find out what it was good. This is a good one. This is a really good one. It is called Counting on Catherine. How Catherine Johnson saved Apollo 13 because she liked to count. By Helene Becker, illustrated by Dal Thunder. Look at this math. Look at this math. This looks more like the science that we do. <laughs> science. There she is. Catherine loved to count. She counted the steps to the road, the steps to the church, the number of dishes and spoons she washed in the bright sink. Uh, if I counted that, it'd be zero. The only thing she didn't count were the stars in the sky. Only a fool would try that. Even so, the stars sparked her imagination. What's out there? Catherine yearned to know as much as she could about numbers, about the universe, about everything. Catherine's boundless curiosity turned her into a star student. She was so bright, she skipped three whole grades. Whoa. She catapulted right past her brother Eh, he wasn't very happy about that. By the time she turned 10, Catherine was ready for high school. But back then, America was legally segregated by race. The town's high school didn't admit black students of any age. Catherine burned with fury. She wanted more than anything to keep learning. There was still so much to know. Count on me. Catherine's father told her. Working night and day, he earned enough money to move the family to a town with a black high school. Institute, West Virginia. From White Sulphur Springs, West Virginia, to Institute, West Virginia. Wait, which way did they go? Mm, yeah, they went this way. Catherine loved high school. She was good at every subject but math was still her favorite. She dreamed of becoming a research mathematician, making discoveries about the number patterns that are the foundations of our universe. In those days though, there were no jobs as research mathematicians for women. Professions most available to them were teaching and nursing. So Catherine became an elementary school teacher. She liked her job, she loved her students, but she never stopped dreaming about exploring numbers. In the 1950s, a U.S. government's National Advisory Committee on Aeronautics, NACA, hired thousands of new employees. It even started hiring black women as mathematicians. Catherine heard about the mathematician jobs. Her heart raced with excitement. 
Perhaps her dream could come true after all. But when she applied for one of the positions, she was told they were already filled. Catherine had to wait a whole year until new spots opened up. Her patience paid off and she got the job at Langley Aeronautical Lab in Hampton, Virginia. A few years later, the Soviet Union sent a rocket ship into space, launching a space race with the United States. The NACA was rolled into a new space agency, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA. Now, Catherine found herself at the heart of America's space program. She worked as a computer. Electronic computers were not widely used yet. Calculating long series of numbers. As all the computers were women, they were given the tasks that men thought were too boring and unimportant. But that didn't bother Catherine. She knew that without her contributions, a spaceship couldn't reach its destination, nor safely return to Earth. Here's why. Sending a rocket ship into space is like throwing a ball into the air. At first, the force of the throw sends the ball up, 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 up. But as its energy runs out, the ball's path woo, curves back to the ground. And where it lands depends on the angle it was thrown and how high and fast it flew. Now, because math is kind of a language, Catherine could ask those questions. All right, how high is the rocket ship going to go? And how fast is it going to travel using numbers? And numbers would provide the all important answer. So where is it going to land? So she had to know how fast it was going to go, how high it was going to go, to figure out how it was going to land. And all of those questions have num numbers for answers. Math. To find out, Catherine plotted the numbers she calculated on a graph. Then she joined the points together and they formed a, lined cur a curved line. At one end of the line was Earth at the time the rocket ship launched. At the other was where Earth would be when the ship landed, because Earth like moves around the sun. Catherine's reputation for accuracy and strong leadership skills, she was known for asking plenty of questions, got her promoted to Project Mercury a new program designed to send the first American astronauts into space. Mercury's missions were going to be dangerous. So dangerous that even the project's star astronaut, John Glenn, refused to fly unless Catherine okayed the numbers. You can count on me, she said. Glenn's spacecraft, Friendship 7, orbited the Earth three times and returned home safely. And Glenn became a national hero. Catherine was promoted again. Now she was asked to calculate the flight paths for Project Apollo, the first flights to the moon. Count on me, she said. And on July 20th, 1969, as the Magic 8 Ball told us for sure, Apollo 11 astronauts <laughs> walked on the moon. Their feat was celebrated around the world. More triumphs followed. Apollo 12 rocketed to the moon on November 1969. Apollo 13 launched on April 11, 1970, but on the third day of Apollo 13's flight, the worst thing happened, an explosion in space. Could the crippled spaceship make it to the moon? And if it didn't, would it be able to get back home to Earth? The three astronauts on board were, on grave, were in grave peril. Commander Jim Lowell told his mission control, Houston, we have a problem. Back on Earth, Katherine Johnson got a phone call. Her flight path calculations would have to be done all over again and perfectly. It would be the toughest challenge of her life. Katherine told Mission Control, you can count on me. She rolled up her sleeves, took a deep breath, and began doing the math. She worked hard and fast. A few hours later, Catherine's calculations were finished. The flight path to return home would take the ship around the far side of the moon, and from there, the moon's gravity would act like a slingshot to zing the ship back to Earth. To get home, the crew of Apollo 13 would have to follow Catherine's course exactly 
by burning off fuel at precise intervals. If the astronauts made a mistake, their ship would drift through space forever. Catherine actually waited to hear the astronauts report. Finally, it crackled over the loudspeakers. We've got it! Apollo 13 was back on track. Katherine Johnson had done it. She brought Apollo 13 home. She was no longer the kid who dreamed of what lay beyond the stars. She was now a star herself. And that, my friends, is what a Catherine, a girl like Catherine, a woman like Catherine, can do with math. Math, mighty indeed. And Captain Johnson, mighty indeed. I mean, my goodness. She, she, uh, African Americans had, had strikes against them, not even being able to go to high school in some towns. Women, not even able to do things that the guys thought were important, you know, or not boring. Counting on Catherine. That, my friends, is what math can do. Math can also make me smile. It makes me smile. You make me smile. You plus me equals fun. Me plus Rebecca equals fun. I love you guys. And we will see you. Don't forget to tune in next week. Oh, Miss Jill's Dinosaur Show is coming up at 11. We have Woo! science today. Don't forget to tune in next Tuesday at 15 for Alice, the camel, the horse, the lamb. Don't do it. Kiss your beautiful brain. Kiss your loving heart. Look in the mirror and say, hey, good looking, because you're all good looking. And we'll see you in three weeks with brand new episodes on season two.